Okay. So we have seen the uh, basic MVC pattern how it's going to work, right? Um, what exactly are the components? Uh, you know, uh, we have seen before. So let me just give you a refresh. So <clears throat> this was the environment which we are going to work on, right? So we have seen the same uh, picture on that day, right? Where uh, we have seen three things, which is model view on controller. So in controller, right? In controller part, so we will be having an XML as I said, right? So main. Uh, main person who is going to redirect everything is structure XML here, right? And interceptor is something which will work as a firewall for this uh, um, controller here. So we can actually control the whole flow in struts using our XML, right? So which means we don't have uh, to actually, so this struct XML, so we don't have to actually build anything because we are not going to change any class files or anything here, right? So you don't have to rebuild, recompile anything or redeploy anything. You just you just have to change XML and just replace the file. So in your setup, right? For even that, you need a web server, right? With a web server, even this uh, will not work, right? The complete thing, because this environment is again built for a direct uh, physical uh, MVC pattern which needs at least a web server. So again, um, here we will be using Tomcat. I'll, I'll show you again how to set up Tomcat, Tomcat again, right, to our Eclipse, right. And uh, yeah, and the model uh, here will be our action classes. So action classes will be like beans, right. So as of now, let's think about uh, models will be normal action class which contains the methods and properties. So properties are nothing but your getter settings, right? And this action class again should have a default constructor, right? Because we are going to use the action class name directly in our XML, right? So until unless you have a default constructor in XML, right? As we have seen in uh, in our Java Beans, right? So if you are using the Bean class in our JSP right uh, that bean, bean class should have a default constructor because if you are using in JSP it by default it will try to create an object of that bean class until unless you have it have until unless bean class have a default constructor right so uh, JSP can't create an uh, object right and one more thing is it should be serializable that he even here uh, even our action class should be serializable because we are going to use action classes in our XML and sometimes action class tags will be used in our views. So view in, in our case is something which is a JSP. Right? So that will that's how it works. So model it will be giving back so it will uh, XML will be there to the action class so where uh, Action class is something where all the business logics, the main, uh, you know, reason of action class is complete business logic and all the DB handling and the file handling and everything will be done in action class, right? So it may be one class or multiple classes as such, right? But action class calling class will be one. So from action class, you can actually call multiple other classes. So we'll see what exactly are there. So that's why we are written here that model will be one where it can actually pass on to any number of action classes. Our action class in turn can actually go to any number of classes to a game. We'll see this pattern how it how it is going to work. Right? So once the action class is done uh, is uh, done with it done with the logic, it will give the result back to XML again. And this XML, based on the result it is returning, will actually show the corresponding JSP or view to the user. Right? And this view will be uh, buffered out to the client who is uh, trying to access the page. Okay? So this is how it is going to work in our uh, MVC pattern. So and this is something which uh, is the basic you know, uh, rule instructs. 
and what exactly he starts giving us is basically a very powerful XML pattern which is XML struct XML because if you just use struts right uh, struts APIs right so this XML can actually route your request to action classes and JSPs or JSPs to action classes everything. For that we need APIs. And we have interceptor, right, which is capable of doing some predefined actions like, you know, exception handling, right, or, um, you know, uh, checking, verifying the request, right, verifying the request in the sense as such is again written on Java, right. So, uh, our JVM will have one component called bytecode verifier, right. So, this bytecode verifier is something which also works for web, right. So, whenever anything triggers on JVM, right? Obviously, if anything has to be shown or converted to servlet or converted to uh, JSP to uh, or decode to servlets and everything, right? It has to talk to JVM. Which means the JVM in turn will consult uh, bytecode welfare. So, if it feels that, okay, everything is fine, then obviously it will work. So, this interceptor, as it works on complete JVM, right? It also contains a security components too. Right, which also can be can work as a firewall to our uh, application. Right. So these are basic refresh of what exactly we have seen in our uh, struts. Now, so let me give you a quick overview on this, on uh, what exactly we have downloaded. So we have downloaded this uh, strut XML, which is sorry, struts uh, API, which is two dot three dot uh, some version some. Uh, version, but we are going to check out struts two, uh, uh, and the subversion will be three, and and uh, micro version can be anything. It can be fifteen or anything, so it will be changing. Right now, in this right, we are going to check out mainly. So this is a basic uh, direct uh, plugins, assemblies, apps will be given, and even the docs. So you will be having a complete documentation of you know how exactly to use each and everything. Right. You can see each and every uh, struct, uh, you know, usage that you don't have to go to any documentation. So this itself will download you even the uh, documentation. So here we are more interested on this folder, which is lib, right? So in this lib folder, you will find so many, uh, you know, uh, jars as such, right? So these jars are the main jars of structs. You can see there are around 126 charts. No worry, we, do, we are not going to use each and every chart. Right? We can actually go for, so based on the requirement, right, you can actually go for, uh, you know, particular jar you want to use. Right? So based on the integrations, we will be using some. Right? Based on direct usage, we will be using some. You can see that there are something called, you know, tile APIs. So the styles APIs are something which we will be using for integration of uh, struts to tiles. Right? You can see there are struts to tile plugins, right? And there are struts to J unit plugin, struts to JS of plugin, right? Struts to JS J pre chart plugin. So we are not going to use these things, right? Why? Because uh, you know if you are using JS of to work with struts to right. So in order to integrate that, we'll be going on with this, right? In the same way, J. Right? So that's how in the same way, Dojo. So we are going to use a uh, few things which uh, which we need in order to generate a basic such website access. So if you are actually you know connecting the search to any, if you want integration part, right? anyways, we'll be we'll also be checking out the integration part. So when we actually move to integration side, then we'll be using some more IP APIs in here. Right? So that's how we are going to see. And you can see that, you know, if you are using the old strut APIs, right, you can see there is one thing called strut score. Right? So this is the main um, jar file we have, strut score. So, and also we have one thing called 
trut two core also will be there. So this trut score, you can see, this is on first version, one dot three, right? So if you want to use trut one and you want to use any integration file or any of the API here, right? Then you can go for trut score one dot three and you can actually move on with other. You will also have trut two core. Let me show you that. Yes, yeah, this one. So the main API which we have, which uh, which is uh, needed uh, for us to run the set XML, right, is core uh, jar. So for 1.0 version, we have stretch score, and for 2.0, uh, I mean, uh, 2, 2 second and the uh, sub versions, we have stretch 2 core. So this one will be using for uh, for the actual running of our charts. So I have segregated some of the jars which we have to use. So we are going to so such to jar. So we just have to use few things. Even these I have, I have actually I don't taken up um, uh, you know almost uh, some twenty. You don't need even the twenty you know jars as such. So you just need few of them, few of them in order to you know uh, develop a simple. Uh, start uh, application right? now how we we are going to you know use them in our application or in our eclipse is the question right? so in our start side we are going to only use the apis right apis in the sense the jar files right we are going to use these jar files in our eclipse so once we are actually you know uh, I've created a new workspace here right for my eclipse so let me go to workbench so now, uh, again, if you are using, if you are going to create any struts application, right, which means uh, we don't have any separate project for such application, it is a normal dynamic web application we have, right. If you are going to use that, so we will be creating a dynamic web application. So let me create a web application here, which is, so dynamic web project. So let me call this my structs two, right? And so again, all the properties will be same across. Right? Even dynamic web model version, either you can keep it three dot zero, and structs two sometimes work. You know, uh, it will do it. It will work for three dot zero, but if you are going to use your sets one, right? Then you'll have to choose older one, either two dot five or older, right? Because such one is not compatible with uh, such one, the jar, such one jar which you will be having already in your project site right, may not be compatible with 3.0. Then you will have to go back. So that's why even such two can work with the 2.5 too. Right? If you want to change your web configuration, let us try with 3.0. Right? Let's keep it as 3.0. Let me click on next. And you can keep this class as a. Oops. And now, so here we have uh, runtime, right? So, so this Eclipse instance, I've created a brand new workspace, right? So as of now, I haven't configured any Tomcat instance to my uh, Eclipse. So never ever create a project, a web project, right? Without creating a runtime, right? So always try to create a new runtime before doing, uh, you know, uh, actual things, right? So let me just close this. Let's go to the service part. Now you can see the service part if you are in a Java double E, uh, which you can see over here. Over here. Sorry. So now you can see that I'm in a Java double E perspective by default. Right. So sometimes when you create your, uh, when you actually create your, uh, open up your Eclipse workspace site, right, by default it will be in Java perspective. That perspective is nothing but with respect to the selection of the mod, right? So your windows will actually re, you know, uh, will be uh, enabled with something. If I'm going to use uh, Java, right? So some things uh, will change. 
So if you can see here, when I select on this, you can actually select any perspective you want. Right? It can be complete JavaScript perspective or Java perspective or if you're working on Android, it will be DDMS perspective or you have um, something called uh, yeah, exactly XML. XML perspective, right? There are so many. They have. So by default, no, normally for some, you know, uh, sometimes you'll get Java perspective for some Eclipse you download, but sometimes if you, if based on your usage, right, it'll actually change to Java. W. You can see default, it's giving default as Java. W. If it is not there, always try to convert that to W so that you can actually have, uh, uh, your Eclipse will actually change to a uh, template of web application. Now here let us create a Tomcat uh, setup. So go to servers. If you're not able to see this, right, you can always go to window, show view, and servers. Right? So click on new server wizard. Again, so again you can have any num any uh, server to configure. So as of now, we are going to check out Apache. So in Apache, we will check the latest one, which is uh, Tomcat 7.0. Uh, server, click on next again. So here, don't change anything you want. So JRA everything let's use the same. And you have to give the uh, path of the Tomcat being installed. So let me just uh, browse on. Or you can just go to this so with my so in the C directory I have a Tomcat. So you can see there are different versions of Tomcat I've downloaded. Let me just take the latest one, 7.4.1 and yeah. So I have to give this path to my Eclipse, which is this. Now once you give this, right, it will automatically set the thing. If you don't give the correct one, right, it will check whether the installation directory is there or not. So mainly you have to, you have to go ahead with the uh, you have to go ahead with the latest one, I mean, the actual path, the bin folder path of your Tomcat. Right? You can see it has a bin folder path. It, it, this will actually, you know, give you the actual direction to this. Right? You can directly use that. So Apache Tomcat, maybe if you want to change the name, you can just give dot 41 as we are going to use this. So that tomorrow if you are using, you can actually see this name as such. Right? And even if you want to download and install, you can also do that. But don't go for download and installing part. It may not, you know, download the latest one as such, right? So always, you know, download your uh, Tomcat and then try to set up the things, right? So that's the best place to do. Yeah. And I hope you have the link from where to download Tomcat, right? You can directly download Tomcat from Apache site. Click on next. And as of now, you can see there are no uh, projects being configured, so click on finish. So this will actually set up your Tomcat. Perfect. Now your Tomcat is ready. Now you can see the servers folder will be created. Now as I've created a new workspace, right? So always remember your server configuration will be there with respect to your workspace. It is not that once you uh, configure your server in Eclipse, right? It won't stay for all, right? So all these configurations will be saved in workspace only, not in a complete Eclipse instance, right? Also, if you are going to create a project, right? So now we are going to create a dynamic project. Let me show you that. So go back. Back we have dynamic project. Go to next. Now here let me give my steps. Two. So here now you can see target runtime will automatically pick up this. Or uh, if you have any, it will give more. Sometimes you can actually configure more than one server, right? Then it will take up the default one. Now leave everything as it is. So click on next. So let's uh, give the building classes the same folder. Click on next. So here let me let me check the web.xml. So this web.xml is one one uh, which is very important in our start framework again. And click on finish. So they will create a now here. So this is a very basic web uh, web project which you have created in Eclipse. So we haven't enabled this with our uh, 
aspects or anything right so now if you want to enable this two stacks right then we have to go for these charts again right so these charts which i was talking about right you have to copy this up charts and just copy these charts into your lib folder now if you remember lib folder is something which is directly which will actually directly give reference to the whole project of the charts which you are going to uh, copy up here right so that is what is going to happen now we can actually copy all the charts so which i have filtered here you can see there are around 28 charts which are filtered for few things or what you can do here is you can actually copy few lesser charts let me show you one more project let me get the So these charts, so these ten charts will do. But even in these ten charts, few things are very important, which is core. Core is important, right? Because these are main uh, mother, uh, you know, jar for actual creation of your uh, web project, right? And the main things like lang, file upload, I/O, like these things. If we will be using these, so that's why this and Xwork core, right? So Xwork core and ONGL. So ONGL jar is uh, so we will be using this ONGL jar in order to uh, communicate between the model and the JSP. Right? How we can actually persist the tags, right? So even uh, these things are something which are developed by Struts uh, people itself, right? That we will be using. So let me copy this and let me just paste that over. So uh, I just copied all the jars over here, right? So all my uh, lib folder jars are copied just over here. So uh, now, so this is uh, my project or my project, right? Is now enabled with uh, enabled in the sense my project I can write a strut program or I can write a strut MVC program in my project called my struts two. Again, if I have enabled my struts2 project with struts2 jars, right? It doesn't mean that if I'm going to create one more project, that will not for, work for struts again. You have to do the same thing. You have to copy the same jars again to one more project if you want. So if you are creating 10 different projects in your clips, right? Which means you have to follow the same step, right? For all the uh, project classes. Until and unless you follow, that they won't work, obviously, right? Because it is not like you know you are going to actually uh, work. You are, you, are, you are actually making your eclipse compared to the stretch across all the projects. You can also do that. So in order to do that, you always you can actually go to a window uh, preferences. So in preferences, you have something called you have project. You have project and properties so here you have java build path right so in this java build path you have libraries so in this libraries part right if you are if you want to add any external jars you can actually uh, add the jars to here right so you can also do that part but again we are adding this to our local project part right again this will be exposed only to the current project if you want to do that to again other projects, then again you have to create the uh, property, go to properties again and you have to uh, copy the charts as an external charts. You can also do that part. But as you have a direct folder to expose diff, right, you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to use your build path uh, libraries to copy these things, right. So these are first step to actually uh, create your uh, uh, start Excel, start uh, project, right? So which will actually give you support to create your uh, things. Now, the next thing is, so first you have to create your, as I said, you can actually create your anything you want, like you know model view or controller asset, right? So controller here is something which will be your start XML, right? So we'll see how to create a start XML once we actually start up with uh, the and the first program, like how to write a start XML uh, start program, we'll, we'll, we'll see that tomorrow because 
it, it should be given in one shot, right? Or it will be, an, or you guys will be confused of how to create a stratexable basic XML, basic uh, project of stats, right? How we are going to use our uh, view, a model, or uh, XML, how we are going to do that part, right? But the basic setup of uh, strut to for your Eclipse is this. So whatever you have downloaded, all the all the things right in starts is uh, will not be uh, needed for that because it will actually give you everything like source licensing part right or you have uh, docs to read apps and maps about the uh, basic apps you can see they have actually given their direct word files you can deploy them in your uh, Tomcat you can see how exactly they works yes they have all the things given but among them we have lib folder which we will be using. And even here, there are so many, you know, uh, jars. So based on your requirement, you can actually work on that. So CXF is something which will be used for uh, the web service communication part. Right. So based on that, you'll be safe. Right? But as of now, try to uh, use these jars. So I'll copy the folder which we have consolidated uh, in our Dropbox. So you can just connect with that. Right. So that.